Hello Daily Drafters and welcome to a unique video here on the channel designed to get you ready for your Dominaria United pre-release events this weekend. Whether you're a seasoned veteran who hasn't been to a pre-release in a while due to various COVID restrictions or otherwise, or if you're a brand new player who's never been to a pre-release before, today's video can help you feel comfortable and have a great time at your pre-release event. If you find the information in today's video helpful, I'd love it if you were able to support the channel in turn by subscribing. I really appreciate each and every one of you here today and look forward to helping you crush your pre-release. Now, some of you might be asking yourself, what exactly is a pre-release? Well, each year there are roughly four or so main set releases of Magic the Gathering products, and most local game stores run what's called a pre-release for each of these main set releases. Essentially, you battle it out against your friends and strangers using several booster packs of the brand new cards from the upcoming set that has yet to be released, hence the name pre-release. If this sounds interesting to you, let's take a step-by-step -step look at exactly how these events are run. Step 1. Locate your local game store. In order to participate in a pre-release event, you'll need to locate one. If you do not already have a local game store that you frequent, I've included a link in the description to a website that will help you find a game store running a pre-release event near you. Now that you've found where you'll be participating, it's time to get registered. Usually, stores will run events all weekend, maybe one on Friday, two on Saturday, and one on Sunday. Check with your LGS to see when the events are happening and which ones you would like to attend. Be sure to note that sometimes these events fill up fast, so you may need to pre-register to ensure you have a spot. It just depends on your store. Other times, you can just walk in and register on the spot. Be sure to find out what is best for your situation. Now that you're registered, it's time for the fun part. When it's time to start the event, you will get handed a pre-release pack, like the one on your screen now. Now that you've got your pack, when the event begins, you'll be instructed to open your pack and begin your deck build. It varies from store to store, but usually you will have about 50 minutes or so to build your deck and get ready for your matches. Let's take a look at what you'll find when you open your pack. Inside you will find one traditional foil rare or mythic rare from Dominaria United with a year stamp. Here's an example of what that card might look like using a rare from the last set, Streets of Nucapenna. Six Dominaria United draft boosters. One 20 sided spin down die. One reusable deck box with a divider. And one MTG Arena code card. We now have everything we need to begin our deck build. If you'd like to, to see an example of a Dominaria United sealed deck build, stick around until the next segment where I will build an entire sealed deck on screen for you to follow along with. After you've built your deck, you will then be assigned an opponent by the event coordinator and you will play out your first match. Different stores will give you different amount of matches for the event, but usually it's a minimum of three. Sometimes you might get lucky and be able to play four or more, it just depends. After you've finished your matches, you may qualify for some prizes, so be sure to check out with the event coordinator to cash in your winnings. Now, the hardest part about the whole event is how to build your deck. But, great news, I will now go ahead and go through an entire sealed deck build to give you an idea of what you want to be looking for in your pool of cards and how to maximize your chance of having a competitive deck for the event. So I'm here on draftsim.com, which I found to be a really great resource for um, building sealed decks and even doing some simulated drafts for yourself. So definitely check out draftsim.com. It's unsponsored, but definitely a great resource I have uh, used a lot myself. So when you're at your pre-release and you open your six packs, you will see just a pile of cards like this. If you sort it by color, you could kind of see some multicolors over here. You can see some lands and colorless cards and then all of your five colors over here. Uh, one thing that Draftsim doesn't support, though, is getting that extra little stamped rare card. So we're only going to have six rares in this pool instead of seven, but the idea is still the same. So the first thing I'd like to do when you have your pool in front of you is to sort by rarity. And you'll see your rares and mythics over here. You'll see your uncommons here and then all of your commons here. You'll have a lot more commons, obviously. Um, so when we take a look at our rares here, unfortunately, this set does have some rare lands and we have found two of them in our pile. You never really want to see rare lands in your uh, sealed pile because 
Well, they're not as powerful as non-lands, obviously. So we've got two lands here, but we've got Anointed Peacekeeper, a three-mana 3-3 three, three with some upside here. Rodas Firebrand, a two-mana 3-1, pretty aggressive. Elder Dragon War, a nice little modal thing. It's just a four-mana 4-4 four, four flyer if you want it to be. You can also, like, a mini board wipe and then also discard and, and draw some cards. And then there's Rivaz of the Claw. Three-mana 3-3 three, three Menace, a little bit of a dragon build around which is not really supported so much in this set, but you never know. Maybe we have some things there. So, based on our rares, obviously black-red, and potentially black-red splashing white, because we have two lands here that can splash four white. So we could get every single one of our rares in this pool, which is very un... I was going to say uncommon. It's very rare, pun intended, to be able to fit all six of your rares in your pool. But... Let's go ahead and sort back by color. The next thing I like to do is see if we can fit those rares in our deck. I go through and I look at each color and I pull aside cards that want to pull me into that color. So reasons that I want to go ahead and play that color. So Drawbridge, Runic Shot, Faith Bonder, Sleeper, Destroy Evils, Herbalist, Take Up the Shield, Peacekeeper, um, Skydiver... That's a pretty good one. This one is not great. Um, Herbalist is fine. Take up the shield is okay. So I've got like four-ish cards in white, maybe. As far as blue goes, to be honest, it's basically just Talarian Geyser that pulls me into wanting to play blue. So I think blue is pretty much off the table for us here. I'm going to skip over black and red for now because we know we're likely to be playing that. I just want to take a look at green, see if anything pulls me in here. Got a couple of combat tricks. Another combat trick. Another combat trick. We have four snare spinners. <laughs> okay. Well, if we play green, we are not going to lose in the air. A couple of sunbathing root wallows. Vine Shaper Prodigy is a card I would love to play if possible. Um, let's see what this one does. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's not... Oops, wrong one. This one's not too bad. But, I mean, if you look at green and white, we've only got four and two cards, which these cannot make up decks. So, I really don't think green and white are going to be particularly playable here. Uh, blue, definitely not. So, if we take a look at black, the cards that pull me into black, Battlefly Swarm is fine. Bone Splinters is good. Repossession is great. Double Knight of Dusk's Shadow is great. Vivisector is fine. Probably prefer not to play Abomination. Double Tribute to Urborg. A um, couple Sabotages. If we go red, we can kind of be a little bit aggressive making them discard cards and kick it to deal damage. Phyrexian Rager. Um, Balduvian Atrocity. I mean, our black is looking outstanding. Extinguish the Light. Um, I don't really like Tattered Apparition. Shadow Prophecy is... Fine. So basically, three mana look at the top. Basically, three mana draw two, lose two at instant speed. I mean, that's fine. Let's see. Flowstone Infusion is good. Probably not going to be able to play either of these. Definitely want a Lightning Strike. Here's our rare. Throw the possibilities fine. I don't know what how I feel about this card necessarily. Uh, Heirloom Battle Hymn is great. Keldon Strike Team is great. War Leader's fine. If we're playing red, black, Thrall to the Pit could be playable, although this could be more of a sideboard card. Uh, Elder Dragon War is fine. Fire Nados are okay. Um, and both of these are a little underwhelming here. And then we can get in a couple of red, black uh, rares and uncommons over here. Um, these are not particularly splashable because they have double white in their cost. We've got Caves of Koilos, we've got Sunlit Marsh, and Thran Portal, and potentially Relic of Legends if we want it to splash something like Anointed Peacekeeper. I can put that in there. Yeah, there it is. So, I mean, this pool kind of built itself a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, Relic of Legends to help splash this is the only other thing I can think of. But we have Caves, Sunlit Marsh, Thran Portal, and a single Plains. That's plenty enough to splash the Peacekeeper here. Um, I, I mean, we can add this for now. Usually what I like to do is I like to add more than 23 cards over here, and then I'll make some cuts. Um, everything else, 
I think I'll be fine starting in the sideboard. So then we can go here, we can click swap, and now we can look at our deck. This is now our sideboard. And we currently have 32 cards in deck with 29 of them being non-lands. So the only thing is you can't really like rearrange these how you want them in drag and drop. Just lost the land here, where'd it go? There it is, okay. So we have about six cuts to make here. Um, I don't think we need double Thrall to the Pit. Maybe one is fine, especially because we're red-black, we can take advantage of that kicker. Double Fire Nato, this card's a little clunky, so we'll leave one in the sideboard here. Um, Thrill is probably more of a blue-red card. Um, I like the rest of our red. Let's take a look at our black here. Repossession. Honestly, even if you can't kick this, I think it's still good enough. One mana, gain two life, return a creature graveyard to your hand. I mean, that's still totally fine. Um, tribute to Urborg can't be kicked in our deck, but it's still two mana minus two minus two, which is okay. I don't think we need two sabotages. Um, Shadow... Oh, cut the wrong card there. Shadow Prophecy is... Probably fine to start in the sideboard. And now we have 24, so we can cut one more card here. Um, I think one Sabotage is fine, especially in Sealed. This card goes up a little. Cards like this, Mind Rots with Upside, go up a little bit. Um, Bone Splinters. Do we really have the Sacrifice Fodder for Bone Splinters is the question. I'm not sure we do. So it's much more of a card that you want to have Sacrifice Fodder in. So, you know, black-white, this card is great. Black-red, it's not bad. It's pretty good with double Thrall to the Pit. But that's a five-mana combo, and you have to have both of these cards specifically. But this right here leaves us with 17 cards, or 23 non-lands, and then we can go ahead and see exactly how to add lands here. There we go. It added some lands for us. Oh no. It it replaced. Oh no, it built it for us. Oh no, that button was to build it. Okay, I'm going to make a quick cut right here and get back to where we were. Okay, I think and I hope this is where we had it at, but now I've got our 17 lands in here with um, these three non-basics along with 14 basics, one planes, four white sources for the anointed peacekeeper here plus all of these lands to get all of our black and red cards in. So that's usually how I go about building um, sealed pools. I think this one's honestly a pretty straightforward build. Not all of them are this easy. Uh, we had some colors that were not particularly playable, but I think this deck is actually quite good for a sealed pool. Uh, we're able to fit, I think, literally all of our rares in here. So again, that's a really good spot to be. And uh, yeah, that'll do it for this sealed build. I hope this entire video was helpful for you and helps you build the courage you need to go participate in a pre-release event at your LGS this weekend. If you've never been to one before, I highly recommend it. It's one of the most absolute fun ways to play Magic, and you'll meet tons of different players there. If you do end up going, return back to this video and leave a comment to let me know how it went for you. I'd love to hear your feedback from each and every one of you about your events. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end of this video, and I will see you soon here at Daily Draft.